Um, so what we're talking about today is uh, decision trees, which are kind of a broad category of um, classification and regression, actually, um, algorithms. So we've talked about so far um, k nearest neighbors. So I guess we have um, a slide on that. Um, we've talked about uh, k nearest neighbors already, which was just a kind of spatial approach, saying if points are near each other, maybe they're in the same class. Um, we talked about logistic regression, which is kind of a more um, probabilistic, simple linear probabilistic model. So you learn. All, you take all the features from the data, you weight them, and it gives you a probability function, and you use that probability to say whether it's in the class or not. So if it's above 80%, then this is an image of a cat. If it's below, then it's an image of a dog, um, things like that. And, um, and we talked about ways to mathematically represent those and optimize different probability functions for, to use them as classifiers. We're going to talk about um, SVM and neural networks later. So sometimes every sometimes some years I swap the order of the course a bit. Um, decision trees are um, uh, a logically another general class like this um, that uh, lets you do classification and prediction regression on all your data. And they're kind of one of the simplest, most powerful ones um, because they basically can fit any function. They can um, come up with a classifier, no matter how complex your data is, there's a way to solve it using at least ensembles of decision trees. Um, it's always going to be a matter of whether um, it's um, how fast it is to train and how accurate it's going to be, how efficient. Um, but some methods are not general, right? So um, they, they can only come up with, um, what do we call them, universal, right? So some methods, and we'll do this again when we get to the neural networks, we'll talk about this more formally. Um, but a universal method, and I don't have the word decision tree on this slide because the whole thing is about decision trees. Um, decision trees and neural networks are universal. And, and the idea is that no matter what your um, data is and no matter what um, your, uh, your complexity of it is, um, we should be able to, um, can you do undo? We can learn a uh, if we're well, so what we're doing is learning um, a function um, over x and, and y that's given some parameters theta, and what we're learning is that you can get from the data to the labels. Um, for these universal ones, you can do it no matter how what. Um, the data is like how complex it is, there's a way to come up with an exact one, which isn't necessarily what you want, right? We talk about overfitting. If you learn an exact model in your data, then it may be very bad at new data, but um, it's possible to have one that's perfect. Um, whereas these other models, it is not possible for complicated data because they've got these linear patterns where they're limited to kind of neighborhoods or SVM has its own kind of linear restrictions. Um, they're very powerful, but they're not universal. So. Um, universal doesn't necessarily mean it's better because sometimes it's overkill, right? Maybe it's too powerful, it's going to be expensive and not worth it, right? Logistic regression would be perfectly good. Um, so the idea though for decision trees is to come up with very simple um, rules that basically split on some features. Um, so the, the features could be um, continuous um, or discrete values. The, the one nice thing about um, decision trees, a couple nice things, is that um, is that they work just as well on um, discrete data sets. So if you're, if you're splitting on color um, as well, um, then um, you, uh, you can use a decision tree just as well because you can pick a subset of these features and another feature and um, split them. Whereas if you have to turn these into um, a continuous line and fit, you know, like if, if color is one of your dimensions, and you're thinking of logistic regression, what is the weight that you use to multiply by the color that will help you fit it, right? Because red and blue and orange are not in any kind of order, right? So if you have these kind of categorical um, variables, it's um, sometimes hard to do that. So what we talk about then is we do um, um, one hot encoding, right? Um, for these, where we say there's actually, you know, color red, and it's just zero over one, and there's color blue, 
and it's zero ones, you create a new feature for every single value of this, and then you can use a linear classifier on these things because you can weight the importance of red and blue and all that. Um, decision trees let us not do silly things like this. We can just use them raw as they are, so that's nice. Um, and they're also a bit more interpretable because of that, because we can understand that color is split in a certain way on the tree. Um, what else do we have here? Okay, so um, I guess oh, I meant to come up with an example. So as an example, what were we talking about? When our example we were using before, um, it's just always the first one I think of, so sorry about that. Um, where we're talking about, um, I guess, Well, why is it a decision tree? Good question. Um, it's a decision tree because we're going to learn a tree to to decide um, something about the data, right? So, we're trying to build a say we're trying to build a classifier over um, census data, right? Of um, of people, right? So we have these data points x, um, and we're going to have um, a number of features. And so we have the data we're collecting on all the people. Um, and then the features are going to be things like um, income, uh, neighborhood, postal code, um, age. What other things would you have? Uh, I guess you'd have um, education level or something like that. I'm mean, trying to decide what the um, question is. So the classifiers are trying to predict what job they have. Um, so you want to predict their employment class, right? So that's going to be something from, you know, the set, um, you know, you're going to be a programmer, you're going to be an accountant, you could be a student. Um, there's going to be a whole bunch of these categories and you're trying to classify that for every person based on all these things, right? Um, and so the idea is we get a bunch of data points, um, X, and we split on something, right? So we split on, say, um, age first, right? And so we have everyone, you know, less than 21, we go on this side, everyone uh, that's greater than, sorry. I'm drawing too quick, I can only undo. So everyone um, less than 21 will be on this side, everyone greater than or equal to 21 will be on this side, and then we have new data points. So on this side, we'd say um, everyone with um, income um, greater than, you know, some number, like a reasonable, just like what you can make in part time. Um, and below that, um, we'd have this way, and then we'd have things about um, neighborhood. You could split on on any features, right? And the idea is that each one of these um, sets so at the beginning here, if you think about what we have at the beginning um, here, essentially you've got your full table, right? You've got um, all your features, you've got all your rows, is n times f uh, features, right? But when you get down to the next level, um, you're basically only taking people that are over 21. So this will be a way that we can categorize people that are in university or in the workforce. Um, and so now you'll have all the features. You basically always have access to all the features, but now you'd have um, some some smaller amount, right? Maybe you only have um, half the data, whatever it is. This is not a rule that it has to be half. It's like whatever the size of the data is. So all the ones here that satisfy that rule are now in this table, and the rest of them are over here, right? So you're basically dividing up the, the data into um, smaller sets and um, based on how many, how do you satisfy this rule, right? And so you're building a tree over um, the data and grouping it into smaller and smaller boxes. And then um, once you get to the bottom, you can basically say that um, you can build classifiers on those subsets of data. So we're partitioning the data into smaller sets. Um, 
So we're making a tree of decisions that way. Now, who makes the decisions and, and what's the right order to do that? That's what all the algorithms are doing, right? When we um, specify it um, formally, um, a decision tree is a graph. If you guys have taken 606, is it, right? With um, Prescriptura, you do graphs and graph search and all that. So a director graph is a directed acyclic graph, right? It's one type of graph. It's just nodes and um, nodes and lines. Um, so just in case you don't know the terminologies, there's nodes, there's edges, um, I also call them lines or arcs some kind, sometimes. Um, what do we call it then? So then we get some down, some more, and um, there's no requirement that the tree is balanced or anything like that. But if you, once you get to the end and uh, a node doesn't have any children, it's now a leaf, right? So these are not leaves, but these are, right? Um, there's no difference between them. It's just that it's a node that doesn't have any children. And like I said, um, a leaf is a partition of the data, right? So it has a subset of the table um, where it's got all the features and some, uh, I guess some uh, LN that's um, less than N, some subset of the data. And the idea then is on this table, um, which you now have, you could run any classifier you want, you want right? Um, you could run a classifier on this subset of the data, you could run k-nearest neighbors, you could run um, naive bays or some neural networks and um, try to answer the question based on this subset. Why, so why would we do that? Right? The idea is that we're, we're um, splitting up the data, partitioning it by different features and like I said, if you now, now know that in this leaf, everyone in this leaf is, you know, um, un under 21 and has income higher than uh, $30,000 and lives in, in this neighborhood, that's, they're all kind of more similar, right? So if you can just intuitively think that if your data set is more similar, classifying is going to be easier, right? Maybe you can come up with a binary classifier that just says whether they're a student or a professional, right? Um, you could have that. So by, by splitting up the data into more uniform um, subsets, it makes it easier to do classification. Um, and it might even make the sense, the point that if you think about it, if you do enough splits, you could have it that all of the, um, all of the data points in this table have the same label, right? Because when we're training, remember, we do have access um, to the label, right? So when I have this, um, this tree here, the label that we're looking for while we're doing supervised training, right? This is um, supervised um, learning, right? Um, we do have access to the the actual answer, so we know if I'm doing trying to classify their job. Sorry, you can hear the uh, the blender again. <laughs> I'll mute for a sec. Does this make sense? Okay, so Francis has a good question. Why can't we partition the data ourselves like uh, using filters or slicing for another classifier rather than using a decision tree? Um, well, that's essentially what you're doing um, where we're slicing up the different dimensions of the data and um, trying to find subsets that are more uniform uh, or that uh, you can classify on more easily. But there's lots of different reasons to do this. So we'll see as we go through using these as ensembles that even just the way you do the splitting can actually give you kind of um, numerical stability by adding randomness. So it's not necessarily you want to come up with the perfect split um, even. It actually is sometimes useful to do randomization of it um, because it helps you reduce bias and other things. But in this pure form here at the beginning with the decision tree, you're trying to come up with essentially the perfect split so that at the leaf, everything in the leaf is the same class or it's very easy to classify it. And then we'll expand on this idea. Um, the idea of using a tree to, to partition the data is just very general, um, and it goes beyond decision trees. Um, so the original idea of the decision tree is to divide up the, the, the space this way, right? We're dividing it um, recursively, you could say, because when you get to um, some, do I have that algorithm here? Yeah, in a little bit I have the algorithm, and it is recursive. Um, once you uh, have basically, you know, once part of the, the data, 
if you think about, you know, this, this subset here on its own is a decision tree, right? And the whole thing is a decision tree, right? So every subset of a decision tree is a decision tree just on a smaller set of data, right? Um, so it's, it can be built recursively and, um, yeah, that's, that's another way. And we'll see this again with, um, Mondrian forest and some other particular ones. If you think of the space as, um, if all of your features are numerical, so they're not categorical things, they're all like actual values. You can even do it in 3d, right? So we have X and Y and Z. Then what is a decision tree actually doing? Um, I guess we should have some data points. Let's create some data points. Um, you can imagine how deep these data points are in 3D space, but um, you have your data points here. And then um, when you're building a decision tree, you're essentially coming up with a split, right? Um, I'm trying to draw, draw a plane here <laughs> um, that goes through that plane and splits it into two parts, right? And then the second branch is like another split um that cuts it into another two parts um and you keep building these so essentially each one of these areas is a rectangle right so um you're, you're dividing the data up into areas of rectangles um but how do you come up with these splits right and why would it be um why would it be useful So um, branching factor, we're usually going to talk about two, although um, you could have a higher branching factor, right? So branching factor is literally just how many splits does every data point have, right? If it's two, but there's no reason from the definition of, of decision trees, you could have three splits. So you should divide every data into three areas, right? So as long as, you know, uh, what do I have? Age, and you just have three different values, right? So age is um, less than 21, age is um, between 21 and uh, 50, and age is between 50 and um, whatever, <laughs> top max. Um, you could have um, each split being a different uh, range, That's, there's no reason it has to be binary, but binary, they're equivalent to binary. You can you always convert it to binary by just adding more um, depth with, with the two splits. So um, binary is more general. Um, we're not looking for the perfect partitioning because that would be, um, again, for 606 and be complete, um, to search all possible ways to split it so that you get the, the most efficient um, splitting of the, tr of the features. Um, but we're looking for a good one. And so there's various algorithms to do that, to approximate what a good split would be um, and, and how it would be useful. All right, so then um, the questions we wanna answer are, are these ones in general about how do we do this splitting, um, right? So should we have you know binary features or, or more? Um, which feature at every node are we gonna pick, right? So um, why do I pick, um, you don't have to do them in particular order, right? So I'm gonna split on age, and then I'm going to split on um, income, but on the other uh, on the other side, I don't even have to do that. I could do on um, on age again uh, on a different split, right? So there's no rule about where you split on each one and how do you choose them, or you have to repeat or not. Um, that's basically up to us to decide. Um, when do we stop and then not split anymore, right? So should we should we split or or not? Um, how do we deal with very large numbers of data? And this idea of pure is going to be um, if you have uh, basically a subset of the table, right? And then your um, your label y um, has a mixture, so some of them are one and some of them are zero. Then we say that it's impure, right? So a pure one would be where they're all now the same class. So you've partitioned down enough so that basically they're all the same thing. So we picked our job, everyone's an accountant, we've got all the accountants, or at least we've got a table that's all accountants. We maybe don't have all of them, but we have all, all of them in here are, right? Um, so that idea of whether you want your table to be pure or not, and how do you deal with missing data or missing features, um, 
is these are all questions. So there's no um, magic answer to to do this. You just want to answer all those questions, and once you've answered all those questions, you'll have an algorithm for learning a decision tree, right? So there are as many um, decision tree algorithms as there are answers to those questions, and some are better than others empirically, like they perform better on certain data, but none of them are really wrong um, necessarily. The CART framework is this kind of old, um, fairly old um, uh, theory and definition about all of this decision tree things, and they, they explicitly talk about it being classification and regression, but basically putting forward all the different rules for how you would build them um, with algorithms. And if you think about why we could do, why is it we could do classification and regression on this? There's nothing different about um, what we'd be doing there because when we get to the leaf level, all we have is a table, and that table gives a bunch of features and, and a label we're trying to predict, right? So if that label is a, a categorical thing like zero, 01 or red, blue, green, um, we're building a classifier for that. But say it's um, maybe we're trying to predict the income level, and so we know their education and their job and their neighborhood um, and their age, and then we're trying to predict the actual, like their yearly income category, that would be regression, right? Because you're trying to come up with a continuous number. Um, so you'd use a different algorithm for it, but you could use a decision tree just as well, because this is really about dividing the data up. What you do with the final node um, with the table is up, up to you, right? Um, so here's a basic pseudocode for it from the Murphy textbook. And this is more really like a meta algorithm again, that's like after you've done this, you've basically come up with the tree, now you do something with the data, right? Um, but even here, you could, there's lots of things you have to figure out um, how, to, how to define it. Um, so um, we're given a, a tree and you're given a node. So initially this node would be the root, right? So first on the, on the first uh, round through this um, node would be root because um, it just be the, the, the root is what we call the, the one at the top, right? Um, And you're given all the data and you're saying depth is basically, I guess in this one, when to stop, does he have a depth? Depth, not worth splitting, yeah, okay. So depth is like, um, maybe don't go beyond 10 levels deep, right? Once, it, once the, the tree is 10 levels deep, just stop, right? Because you have to have a stopping condition. If you remember your recurs recursive um, programming things, you need to have a, a base case, right? That says, we're gonna stop when we decide that this tree is not worth splitting at this node anymore, or we've hit some depth, and this um, this algorithm isn't defined here because you could do it in many ways, right? You could say, okay, if if this is um, less than 10, then we're gonna do something. Um, and you wanna basically compute a cost on your data. And so that's what we're gonna talk about is how you decide whether you're done or whether you should split one more time. There's different ways to do that. Once you've decided whether it's saying, okay, it's definitely worth splitting this table because we've got a thousand rows and five different classes and it's still pretty complicated, we're gonna do one more split, you call fit tree again, right? So you split the data um, on some feature. So you have to pick a feature and you have to pick a value on that feature, right? So let's say we pick age, right? And we've already got, you know, all our data set. Um, and so we pick this, this value um, and now you know, all these guys are going to go into the left side and all these guys are going to go to the right side. So it's a pretty simple algorithm when you think about that you're just recursively dividing the data, right? But you've got a choice here. So there's lots of, that's why it's called the decision tree. There's a lot of decisions to make, right? You've got to decide um, which, which feature, right? You've got to decide um, which value. Um, here you have to decide, is it worth um, splitting or not, right? And then once you've made those three decisions at every particular, at this particular node, you call it recursively and it keeps going. At some point you'll stop and you'll end up having a tree and a partitioning of the space, right? So that's the main um, idea just for dividing. Um, cost, yeah, so we're gonna talk about costs next. Good segue. So that's an important part, right? 